this police officer so, showed the same characteristics as a CO. If you've been to any type of institution, if you've been to a, not a fucking city jail, if you've been to an institution where niggas actually get beat up, you, you will notice these same characteristics. I have this suit on. I, I'm, I'm in authority here. I'm, I'm, I'm the one, if I say go to sleep, you go to sleep. But only here in this place do I run shit. When I take this suit off, I'm lowly Brian again. I'm Brian. Hoes don't notice me. You get police officers that will stay in uniform 24 fucking 7. Yeah, I'm a police officer. Yeah, I'm an officer. Yeah. Only so hoes know that he can get them out of tickets. And he knows that he's being used. But at least he's being used. Fuck your music ain't went nowhere. You begging motherfuckers on Instagram live to listen to your new mixtape cause it's heat. I don't mind being a bear of bad news, my nigga. Yo shit is trash. Call up these people at Quality Key Production so they can get you some old lyrics. They can get you some old concepts. They can get you the beats that you motherfucker need to get your shit to the next level. Get your shit together, big homie. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I am A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation. And this is... Matter of fact, y'all know what this is. Y'all know y'all get the shirts. We're going to skip past that today. Um, I usually don't do this. But I'm going to put a video in my description box. And in this video... There's been an attack uh, by a police officer on a Baltimore man. You know what? I'm not that type of nigga. Let's watch together. So, with that being shown, um, what's up? What's up? Uh, who I need to talk to here? The people of Baltimore, maybe. You know, because this is a, a hip-hop show, whatever like that, this shit is based around rap music, um, I'm quick to go to a rapper about some shit. But, and you know, usually I'm like, why are these niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, my nigga, why the fuck is you... Attempting to promote a lifestyle that you really don't live my nigga and I know you don't live that lifestyle because soon as something happened That's within that lifestyle within the parameters of that lifestyle You niggas act confused and what the fuck going on? I don't know and you don't act like you supposed to act usually niggas the rap niggas are the victims Which is why I can't understand why rap niggas are talking about uh, 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 Got the 30 on the uh, uh, 100 round drum the fuck is you talking about, my nigga? You just got kidnapped and fucking robbed. My nigga, you just got pushed in the fucking mouth. My nigga, you crying about hoes. So I, that's, what I'm, that's, that's, what, that's why I don't like this shit. If it's a real, authentic nigga that's speaking it, it's like, damn, I'm, I can't do nothing but tell a nigga, man, look. If that, I'm saying, this, this is all the fuck I'm saying in everything I say. If that shit ain't you, then don't be that. If you see yourself... In a better, if you if you can see yourself doing something more than the lowest common denominator, because anybody can, they take five pounds of pressure to shoot a gun, and dope sell itself. So what the things that make you a gangster, anybody can do that. All you got to do is give up on life to do that. I'm telling you that, big home. To be a gangster, you have to give up on life. It's too many other things, especially as a black person. Our minds are way more advanced than everybody else on the planet. And I mean that. 
So to see that the, the smartest people, the strongest people, as you can see, on the planet are the lowliest on the totem pole, it's surprising. It's embarrassing. And no one is going to make me feel ashamed for feeling that way. But let's, that's, so that's, let's break down why. That's why I'm at bitch ass rapper next, especially these other, fuck that, especially these other races that are, that are brainwashing my niggas. But at this point in time, I'm asking all real street niggas, what's up? You motherfuckers recite the, you motherfuckers listen to these niggas, these rap niggas got y'all niggas so motherfucking hypnotized, you'll do every motherfucking specific thing that they say. When they, when, when you can relate with something they say in a rap nigga, you rap that shit extra hard in the club. Ride for my motherfucking niggas. That nigga, that fuck to the shit nigga. Which your fuck nigga would to any of my niggas. Smoking big blood, pop perky said mine. Kill a nigga, kill a nigga. So I'm, I'm trying to understand. In this situation, a nigga just real deal walked into your whole team. In the middle of your whole team. And you niggas did not appreciate what the... It would be different if a nigga was beating up the neighborhood crackhead. All oh, that nigga deserve it. This nigga was beating up on one of your niggas. And you niggas stood the fuck down. And nigga with the goddamn broom stopped sweeping. Am I am I am I advocating uh, violence towards police or or am I like what am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Am I advocating for motherfuckers to do harm to police officers? And for you motherfuckers who wonder how I'm monetized but don't get paid from YouTube is because I give you the real shit. They won't allow any of if you notice I don't have commercials at the beginning of my fucking videos because I don't I don't censor myself. I give it to you exactly how the fuck you supposed to have it. So when I'm saying about PayPal, this is why the fuck it happened. Because I'm giving you what the fuck need to be said, big home. A nigga came in your shit, beat up one of your people, had a nigga bleeding on the ground, and you niggas stood the fuck down, and no fucking weapons were drawn. When the other coon and police officer just had his hand on, he had his hand on the nigga back. He said, hold up, let's find out what's going on, huh? Let's find out what's going on, huh? A black man was assaulted in front of several other black men. Gangsters. Real gangsters. I'm, I'm wondering, are you only street niggas to another nigga, not even another nigga, but another nigga that's in a situation like yours? Because I know if it was a white police officer, y'all niggas would have, y'all probably wouldn't even spoke. Y'all probably wouldn't even fucking spoke. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. If it was a white man doing that boy just like that, you niggas wouldn't have said a fucking word. The only reason you niggas raised y'all voices is because it was black police officers. I gotta talk to the people first. We finna get to the officer. Because that's a, that's a whole nother... We finna get to the officer. But I'm talking about as far as niggas. Because I cover hip-hop shit. And the only thing I've been covering is... Niggas getting shot, niggas getting robbed, niggas getting kidnapped, niggas going to jail. Niggas getting shot, niggas getting kidnapped, niggas getting robbed, niggas going to jail. And niggas' music, they're talking about shooting niggas, kidnapping niggas, and robbing niggas, and trying not to go to jail. Life imitates art art imitates life Th that and this, this is this is where i come in at if our art would start being reflective of what of what really was going on inside of our life then maybe something would change you know what i'm saying meaning if in our art we started to talk about what really is going on about how I love killing the only people that can help me when the only people that can harm me, harm me. And see, this is why I deal with artists like Shamil from Boston. What he 
his art, his music. I'm going to put his link in the description box. So you can get an understanding of what type of music I like. The type of music that you should probably listen to so you can get an understanding of what we're dealing with exactly around us and someone who can actually see that. Because it seems like the music that you prefer listening to gives you a false sense of security where you actually, you're into the music, but you're not into the music. Because you're not on that gangsta gangsta, I'm about whatever tip. You just like the beat. I'm not going to allow YouTube or anybody else to paint me into a corner to make me the, uh, the nigga against the police and shit like that. Because I told you niggas to put police out of a job. Stop allowing them the leeway of saying he got the dope. These niggas just shot 69 folks. These niggas just kidnapped this motherfucker. Look what these motherfuckers are doing to each other. I said... Let's use our mind. Let's stop. They gave us dope to sell. They dropped off guns. My nigga Darren told me, if you look at any major project, there's an interstate nearby or an interstate that cuts right through it. So that if they need to shut that shit down, they can come right off the fucking interstate and shut that bitch down. There's not a motherfucking thing that has been done that's coincidence. And also, there's not a motherfucking thing that has been done to us that your neighbor has done. It's not your neighbor's fault. Your brother in the struggle. Your sister in the struggle. It's not a goddamn thing that they have done to harm you or, or to put you in that situation. It's these motherfuckers that did it. Yet and still, when these motherfuckers come, you get all the way in compliance. But when your brother or your sister in this situation, any type of disrespect, you talking about real deal murder. For any situation, it's real deal murder. And that's whole shit. Me and my brother were just talking about a dog. We are talking about a dog. And um, this dog, you know what I'm saying, ain't had no fucking ball. But if it was any dog that was of, you know what I'm saying, the same size as him, just straight at him. Kill shit. But if there was a dog that was smaller, like a chihuahua, he'll let that dog walk, walk, and walk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't fucking with that. And it seemed like with us street niggas, it's totally opposite. The people that are actually, you know what I'm saying, if we really that gangster, the motherfuckers that we should be going straight at with no words... We stand the fuck down and get all the way right. Which, if you look at Big Homie, but I, let's see. If you look at Big Homie, when he was first, the whole the way the whole thing started was, the bitch ass, let's get on the police. The whole ass police officer who didn't get his respect because he felt like as soon as I, when I put this motherfucker, when I join this, um, this fraternity, when I put this fucking blue suit on, this means that me not having no swag, me not having no charisma, me not having no hoes, me not having anything that is conducive to having a healthy relationship, which is why you lame. Let's be honest. This is why you lame. If you had hoes, you wouldn't have became a police officer. You became a police officer so you can get hoes. Be honest. Be honest. This police officer so showed the same characteristics as a CO. If you've been to any type of institution, if you've been to a, not a fucking city jail, if you've been to an institution where niggas actually get beat up, you, you will notice these same characteristics. I have this suit on. I, I'm I'm in authority here. I'm 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 the one. If I say go to sleep, you go to sleep. But only here in this place do I run shit. When I take this suit off, I'm lowly, 
Brian again. I'm Brian. Hoes don't notice me. You get police officers that will stand uniform 24 fucking 7. Yeah, I'm a police officer. Yeah, I'm an officer. Yeah. Only so hoes know that he can get them out of tickets. And he knows that he's being used. But at least he's being used. Because before this, hoes had no use for him. When this officer told whatever the fuck he was saying, like, put your drink down. Get on the wall. He's done this so many times, and you get so many niggas, because we street niggas, we have to comply and be nice with these officers because we don't want them to go any further than just talking to us, if they have to talk to us. Yes, sir, officer. Yes, sir. Yeah, you right, officer. Yeah, yeah. Just like a bitch. With, with a hoe, um, you get a nigga who... A lame nigga who would just give her money because he say give me money. Yeah, wait. You have a lame nigga who gives a bitch money because she says give me money. When she bumps into a real nigga who don't do it, nah, uh, uh it must be a broke nigga and shit like that. She's not used to it and she'll have a uh a negative response to it. This is what happened here. But in this situation, you try my authority. And he forgot that, my nigga, your authority was a false one. You never had any authority. You just had on a uniform. Your uniform demands respect, not you. You as a person demand nothing. You without that uniform is just like the, the, the white police officer in Brooklyn Finest. Like, you notice you have no identity. And this is something that police officers really go through mentally. The most dangerous people on the street aren't the street niggas. It isn't the thugs because what they want is to make money. They want to make money. You look at these jail interviews of these motherfuckers after they get locked up and their, their mind isn't to be violent. A lot of times you hear them say it wasn't supposed to go like that. We were just supposed to rob them. And they thinking, all right, that, that's going to get me out of this shit. But no, you're still going to get a capital murder charge. A crime uh, within the uh, commission of another crime. But, you know, a murder in the commission of a crime. It's a capital murder charge. But these police officers, what their issue is, can't be solved with a couple of dollars. You give a street nigga a hundred dollars, he happy as fuck. You can't give no police officer no hundred dollars to make him happy. You need to give him authority and power. You need to show him that he's in power. Whatever way you got to do that. Whether it's telling you to bend the fuck over or to open your motherfucking mouth. And I don't mean to talk. There's been situations, look this up. There's been situations after situations where male police officers have, have raped not only female police officers, I mean, <laughs> female assailants or suspects, but male suspects. I want to talk to this black officer for a second if I could. If you could bring come to the front for a second. Give him a second. Oh, now, be wrong. Be wrong. Did you think that you had the same rights as a white police officer? Did you think that no matter what you did, you would get the same uh, luxuries that are afforded to them? Because today you, you made this shit happen. Tomorrow you won't have a job. And if you're lucky, you won't be brought up on assault charges. Because they're going to make an example out of you. If a white officer would have committed these acts, then he would have been given a whole two-year-long goddamn investigation, uh, leave with pay, and would have been championed as a zookeeper keeping the gorillas in check. But the public doesn't see you as a zookeeper. They see you as an honorary gorilla that has been domesticated. Black man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just, I'm trying to understand, like, what that man did. Like, 
the 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 nigga was on the corner. He got, you know what I'm saying? He got crunk, whatever like that. Like, get the fuck off me because you was pressing him. Like, if you was in his situation, you just talking to your homeboys around the fire barrel, whatever the fuck. Like, the reason why you ran down on them niggas is because them niggas look the fucking part. You profile them niggas just like any other white racist motherfucker with a profile. You hop the fuck out to show white massa that you got this block under control. We keep these niggas in check around this bitch. Niggas ain't just finna be out here standing up without us, you know what I'm saying, making sure we put down. They gonna know my name. But if that would've been your son, and he came home beat up like that, but I know he wouldn't have came home, but because you would have had to go down to the jail and see him beat up like that. And I, I'm sure you, what, what kind of charge did you put on him? Assault on an officer? Because he told you to get your hand off of him? You pushed that man. You pushed that man. You put hands on him first. And I'm sure that's not what they teach you in the academy, or is it? That's not what they teach you when dealing with a Caucasian suspect. You give him the utmost respect. But if you're dealing with a black male in an impoverished area, do what you please. Keep the animals in check. And and this, this reminds me of a YouTuber by the name of Jaleel Lee. He's autistic, but he teaches kids how to defend themselves and, and how to deal with bullets. I, I don't know what, he's a black belt. A real black belt, but he's autistic. He beat the odds. And I wonder what type of training you have to get. Maybe we should take those classes from Jaleel Lee so we can find out how to defend ourselves when we come about these type of situations. I'm going to put his, uh, his whole channel in the description box so we can get some type of defense classes going on. It, it, it's Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Baltimore. I fuck with y'all. Y'all fuck with me. And it's like, I, I, I feel I feel what this nigga feel because I'm that nigga that I can't walk up the street without a officer stopping me and asking me, you know what I'm saying? Show me your ID. Show me your ID. What, like, what's this? What's that? And you have to give them the utmost respect because as a nigga who's no longer even in the street, you know that this is these are his streets. He owns this because as a as a criminal or a black man with a record, my word don't mean shit. If anybody say